This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. It doesn't seem to matter where, how, or how often I talk to people about influence marketing. I inevitably get questions and seemingly confused looks and frustration from people about measuring what we do. Hey, I get it. Measurement can be confusing. It's often an afterthought, but it shouldn't be, and it shouldn't be hard or intimidating. Back in September, my friends at Tagger asked me to contribute an article to the company's blog that included my thoughts and helpful tips on measuring influencer marketing. The piece was well-received, and I was particularly proud of the thoughts I pulled together there. Today, I'm going to share that article with you in narrative form so that you too can hear my thoughts on why measuring influencer marketing shouldn't be hard. Thanks to my friends at Tagger for inspiring the article and allowing me to share it here with you as well. You will find links to the original piece on Tagger's website in today's show notes. If you click through, you can also find your way to knowing about how awesome a platform Tagger is for influencer marketing. They are our presenting sponsor and a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and yes, measure success. Instead of me reading some commercial script about them, though, I prefer to have happy Tagger customers tell you about their experiences with the platform. I recently caught up with Alexandra Walsh at 3 Day Blinds. They provide consulting and products in the premium custom window treatments category. Alexandra and I chatted about how she uses Tagger. Tell me what KPIs you guys look for in terms of your influencer marketing programs. What are the most important metrics that 3 Day Blinds finds effective to uh, to measure? We're not an e-commerce company, but we do it all through our free and home consultations. So the design code consultant has to come out to you. So what we really want to see is this authentic experience of having a design consultant in your home and how easy it is to create one this relationship with your designer and these new beautiful window treatments. So we want to see the authentic experience. And then every single influencer we work with has a unique link where that we can track on our end. And then they also will get a discount code to offer their followers. And then we can see how many sales and how many appointments and the appointments for us are really important in the marketing team. So we want to see how many appointments the influencers get. But then on top of that, do we get more followers on Instagram? What's the engagement like on the posts? Do we get engagement on our own? social media do how many link clicks are we getting as well as uh, we ask for exclusive images from all of the influencers because we can't do as many photo shoots right now and if we can get more beauty photography out of this that's great thanks to alexandra and three day blinds for sharing their use of tagger to learn more and get a demo to see if tagger is right for you just visit jason.online slash tagger today that's jason.online slash tagger t-a-g-g-e-r why measuring influencer marketing should not be hard. That's next on Winfluence. What's the most perplexing issue you find in today's influencer marketing landscape? For many, the answer is how to measure influencer marketing. For me, it's that people have a problem measuring influencer marketing in the first place. Measuring any kind of digital marketing is not hard. This is an environment of ones and zeros. Everything here is quantifiable. Measurement can be complex for sure, but complexity only implies the need for planning and time to execute. Those are only hard if you're lazy. To make measuring influencer marketing easier for you, I've boiled down the process to three reminders. If you start your influencer marketing campaigns with these three points in mind, you'll find measurement is one of the easiest things you'll do. The first, Define a clear goal. The most important answer you need to have when beginning and building your influencer marketing efforts is the one to the question, what is my goal? Without knowing the ultimate reason you're doing this in the first place means you can never know when you've achieved it. 
in general, goals will fall into one of two broad categories. The first, persuade the audience to take action. This could be to buy your product, download content from your website, subscribe to your email newsletter, or follow you on social media. The second, persuade the audience to think differently. This could be to simply think about you more, awareness, change their opinion of your product or service, or support your position on a given issue. The first is the easier of the two to measure. You simply know the number of people who took the action before a given campaign starts, then measure how many took the action during. If more than one campaign or channel is used to drive the same action, you leverage attribution tools or models to know which channel drove what results. The second is more challenging to measure, but again, not hard. You do need to measure how many people are aware of you or what percentage think one way or another about you or the issue in question before you begin. Then you measure again after the campaign. The change is your result. The second principle is plan to measure. I wrote in Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand that not planning to measure is like getting to the end of the driveway in the family van, turning to your spouse and kids and asking, where are we going on vacation? You haven't made reservations, bought tickets, packed suitcases, found someone to feed the cats, or even locked the house. Why then would you launch a marketing campaign for your company without first planning to measure? In my experience, about 90% of the problem most businesses have with measurement is they wait until the end of the campaign to think about it. You didn't start with benchmarks to know how far from them you moved. You didn't identify the key performance indicators, KPIs, you needed to monitor and capture along the way to gauge success. So when you get to the end of the year and ask, how did we do? The answer is normally, I'm not sure. Uh, what were we trying to do again? Uh, how are we going to measure that? The first step in developing our campaign was to define a clear goal, right? The next step is to decide exactly what we will measure to illustrate whether or not we accomplished it. If your goal is to increase sales among women aged 35 to 54, you first need to know what your sales in that segment were for the previous period. Then you need to develop an influencer marketing campaign that chooses influencers and content creators that reach that audience. Next, you need to ensure the messaging the influencers share includes the call to action to purchase your product. Then you need to design a way to know which sales came from your influencer audiences. You can do that using unique purchase codes, UTM parameters, and custom short links delineated by influencer, or sending all traffic to unique landing pages per campaign or influencer. And you need to use a website analytics tool that presents the actions taken on your site and can segment them by gender and age group. What you've done is set data traps along the way to know how many women aged 35 to 54 are buying your product. You've also built a measurement system that is active during the campaign, which you can monitor, analyze, and optimize for maximum performance. You aren't just waiting until the end to see how you did. And the third principle is measure to the goal. The final piece of the measurement puzzle is all about focus. You have to measure to the stated goal of the project, and more importantly, not be distracted by measures and analytics, charts and graphs that do not. The honest truth is that automatic reports from the various software packages we use in marketing, even ubiquitous ones like Google Analytics, paralyze us with too much information. If my goal is to drive website conversions, I don't really care much about time on site. Yes, it can correlate to higher tendency to purchase or higher average order value, but I don't care how long people spend there as long as they convert. With influencer marketing, you're often presented with a given content creator's reach, impressions, and engagements. But if your goal was to drive sales from that influencer, none of those are the ultimate measure of your success. Yes, they can indicate better chances of conversions or provide supplemental returns beyond your main goal but they aren't your key performance indicator. They're just performance indicators. My recommendation is to define the one to three measures that answer that question. Did we achieve our goal? And focus only on those measures for your reporting. At the risk of committing data science blasphemy, what I'm saying to you is that your influencer marketing campaign report can be one page with one, two, or three numbers on it. 
not 57 PowerPoint slides with more charts than a calculus textbook. So, if my goal in using influencer marketing is to create broader awareness of our new product feature, my report could look like this. Volume of conversations at beginning, 1,289. Volume of conversations now, 2,045. Increase, plus 58.65%. Does the number of influencers I used matter? Well, sure. Do I need to see that on the report? No. Does the number of reach engagements or video views matter? Yeah. Does it answer whether or not I achieved my goal? No. Yes, you can print all the charts and graphs, make copies, and put a multiple-page campaign report in a binder. You can distribute it to the board of directors, shareholders, or put it up on the shelf next to the one from last quarter. But if you follow the advice in the first two reminders, define a clear goal and plan to measure, all you really need can fit in a standard text message. The KISS Rule Measuring influencer marketing shouldn't be hard. In fact, your measurement can likely be improved immensely by simply following the KISS rule. Keep it stupidly simple. Define a clear goal. Communicate all that through the organization, then report the handful of metrics that illustrate that you did or did not meet it. If you do, you'll get fewer questions and fewer ulcers about measuring your influencer marketing. Again, thanks to Tagger for inspiring that article. You can see the original piece when you visit Tagger at jason.online slash Tagger. Click through to the blog and search for Influencer Marketing Measurement, or you can just find the show notes of this episode at jasonfalls.com. I'll make sure there's a link there. Have a measurement trick of your own for your influencer marketing efforts? Share it with us, won't you? Record a voice memo and email it, or just email me a regular email message with your thoughts to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comments on a future episode. Have a different question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K Club and Grammy Award winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence.